ladies welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is tyla and i was an au pair in paris from fall 2019 to summer 2020 now i'm back home in the states and i'm here to help you on your potential journey maybe you're already on this journey right now maybe you're looking for some advice or some motivation to get out of your home country and do it too so i figured that we can talk a little bit about some host family red flags i know that the borders are open and a lot of y'all are trying to book it out of your home countries and i do not blame you so i've been getting some comments to do some more au pair videos so that's what i'm here to give to you guys today today we're going to be talking about some red flags to look out for while searching for a host family i know that the search for a host family can be super intimidating at times but it's honestly a lot easier than you might expect it to be especially as long as you're looking out for some red flags and knowing exactly like what you're about to get into because it can be a very interesting process <laughs> Now, you can find host families on a variety of different websites. I found my host family on Au Pair World, but there's also Au Pair Butterfly. You can also do it through an agency, but if you're doing it on your own, then you're going to want to make sure that you are finding the best family for you. So for me personally, I only spoke with one family on the phone before deciding to go live with them and it worked out for me. Yes, we did have some difficulties. It actually did take me a few months to get adjusted with this host family. I did want to leave at multiple times, but I didn't, I stuck it out. And honestly, I'm so glad just because I love the host family that I lived with. I love the kids, the parents. We still have a really good relationship to this day, but I'm not gonna say that it was all like roses and butterflies and unicorns by any means. And my host kids are watching this right now, like Bizu, I love you so much, you know this, but even they could tell you that like it was hard for me in the beginning. Overall, my host family was fair and I had a lot of green lights pointing me in the right direction. I kind of went off of my gut and knew that this was the right family for me and even though there were some challenges overall it's what shaped me into the person I am today and I cannot be more grateful so there are some horror stories out there but I want to make sure that you guys are getting the best advice possible so that you can have the best au pair stay so the first red flag to look out for is to make sure you know that the family actually needs an au pair wants and needs because a lot of host families they don't really need an au pair what they need is a nanny and an au pair is a cultural exchange and a lot of families forget about the exchange part now you should not be working more than 30 hours a week i actually think that the limit is 25 hours a week i worked closer to 30 but this is just because my family compensated for me in other ways if i ever wanted to be off of work early i was always able to communicate that with them and the parents always made exceptions but some families just want cheap childcare, which is not what an au pair experience is supposed to be babes an au pair is somebody who is joining your family you act as though you are a big sister or big brother and you want to make sure that the family that you're interviewing with has clear intentions on what they want from you and their au pair stay now you want to make sure that your host family actually needs an au pair and that they are excited to actually host you because a lot of kids have multiple au pairs like every single year they have a new au pair that's coming in this may just be routine to them they might not even be excited to have an au pair so this could be a really big problem because you may not even be wanted it might just be like oh our new au pair is here like that happens all the time so you want to make sure that like they are excited to have you come to be with them and their family you're moving into a whole new country into a whole new house with a family that's not your own so knowing that you are actually wanted there is pretty important. <laughs> Now, if a family says that you don't really have a schedule, not a routine, they just want you to be flexible, huge red flag. Are you kidding me? Biggest red flag ever. You wanna make sure you know exactly what's being asked of you. You wanna have your schedule written out for you in advance, and you wanna know exactly what they expect from you in the house. Now, Fridays at 7 p.m., I was off of work. They don't ask me to do a single thing. Outside of my normal working hours, the only household task that I'm obligated to do is to empty the dishwasher. If I'm the first person that's going to use the dishwasher after the dishes were cleaned, that's my only thing I have to do. Other than that, I just have to clean my room clean and I'm good to go. I also ate with my family every single night and on weekends it was optional if I wanted to eat with them I just had to let them know the day of just so that they could prepare a proper portion for me but this varies from family to family I know a lot of au pairs who didn't eat with their host families on the weekends I honestly like if I was around I was gonna I was gonna cash in on that meal because I don't <laughs> need to spend money on, on the weekend if I don't have to, you know? So I was always making sure that I ate with them as much as I possibly could. Now, the number one biggest red flag, I don't care. If they say that they don't want you to talk to their previous au pair, run for the hills, like literally run so far, so fast, like bye, out of here. Like literally just like, if they say that they don't want you to talk to their previous au pair, 
there's obviously a reason for that. Maybe she didn't have a good time. Even if the au pair didn't have a nice experience, the family should let you talk to that au pair because maybe it was just something that she didn't like that you could easily handle. My husband personally offered me the other au pair's phone number and I talked to her the whole month up until I went and I even was able to keep in contact with her once I did get to France. She helped me a lot with my adjustment and like behavioral issues with the kids and I was my host family's last au pair because the kids were older but if they needed my recommendation I would have easily gone and talked to a new au pair just so that she could have her mind put at ease. This is somebody who lived with the family who understands their family dynamic and can give you the insights on everything that has to do with their household so if they didn't have a good experience you should be able to talk to them and find out why because maybe it could be different for you the next red flag to look out for is is the host family communicating with you up until your stay now my host family was constantly updating me with the visa process if I had any questions I was always able to text my host mom so I cared for two kids they were 10 and 12 when I got there the 12 year old was a girl and my host mom gave me her phone number so we were actually texting constantly up until I got there which made the kids really excited to meet me me and even when I got off the plane they had like a little sign they were jumping up and down they were super excited to meet me and I was for them as well because we had already established a connection before I got there so they already knew a lot about me and I knew a lot about them so talking to the kids a bunch beforehand I honestly would say is key if they're old enough to like talk to you on their own but no matter what you should have a call with the host kids if your host family doesn't want you to have a call with the host kids it's probably because they are not the most well behaved context clues you know I was also super lucky because when I was on my way to France, originally I was sitting right in front of a girl who was also from Florida, moving to France to be an au pair. So we got each other all hyped up and we even walked through the airport to meet our host families with each other. So I had a little bit of a support system as I arrived in France. The girl that was behind me on the plane actually did not stay long in France. She got really sad because of the weather. Um, Florida is really hot and sunny and Paris is very rainy and gray and gloomy. My host mom even gave me extra vitamins because she didn't want me to get depressed because there's just not as much vitamin C coming through those clouds as there is in Florida and she didn't want me to get sad. So I honestly really appreciated that. So that also could be another thing to consider if you are from a very sunny place like I was and not used to cold and not used to the winter time. The weather definitely can impact your mood. If you're looking to move to a city that has a completely different climate than what you're used to, that is definitely something to keep your eye out for. Next red flag is vacation days. I don't know if you want to talk about this on your first call with your host family, but it's definitely something that needs to be in your contract. In France specifically, for each eight weeks that a kid goes to school, they normally have two weeks off for holiday. Now the agreement that I had with my host family is that I would take care of the kids full time on the first week of their vacation. And then the second week I had paid time off to go travel and go explore Europe, explore France, do whatever I wanted to do. You should have vacation days because you're moving to another place to explore and if you're just working all the time and you don't really have time off, yes you can do weekend trips but you want to go explore, like go take a vacation, you know? So if your host family is like, no, we just need you to work those two weeks, also run. Just run fast, run left, run right, doesn't matter get out of there because you need some time off okay there's a lot to consider when you're becoming an au pair some things that are really important maybe you find a family that's best suited for you but they are like an hour by transportation outside the city but they have everything else on your list that checks off maybe you're super set on being in the city center but you find a family that's not ticking all your boxes and kind of giving you like weird vibes go with the family that's an hour outside the city because seriously the family makes or breaks your experience hands down also make sure you ask your host family exactly how much time it is from the city center originally my host mom said that we're 20 minutes from paris which is true by car but i'm not driving into the city every day i'm taking the train so the train from my town into the city was like a 45 minute to an hour commute so definitely make sure you ask them like how much is that on public transport as in any city you will get used to the commute I honestly never even paid attention to the fact that like I was taking an hour to get into Paris every single day I was going into Paris every single day so I didn't really care if I was taking an hour but if you know that like you're gonna be out super late at night all the time and you don't want to take the night bus or you don't want to uber home maybe living in the city is best for you the last thing that I would say to consider is how many kids you can take care of because 
if a family is like literally everything that you want on paper but they have four kids and you've never nannied before and you've never taken care of four kids mm, i don't know if i would go with that love <laughs> i personally can only take care of two kids three kids max just because i've had a history of babysitting i know what i can handle personally and i know what i want to take care of and that's only one in each hand i love taking care of two kids and my kids that i took care of were older they're a little bit more self-sufficient it's easier for me being responsible for them. I've heard of au pairs that take care of four or five kids. Personally, that's not for me. Two is perfect. Like, my my kids, oh my God, love them. Love them so much. If they're watching, mwah. <laughs> I love you. I lived in the suburbs, so it took me about an hour sometimes to commute into the city. But overall, I loved living in the suburbs because I lived in a house, so I lived with the host family. I had the whole top floor to myself, so I was still secluded. <clears throat> So I was still secluded from the family. They respected my privacy and I respected theirs. Everything worked out just as it should. Definitely choose the family over the location. That's just my advice. Because these are people that you'll be spending a lot of your time with, taking care of their kids, and you wanna make sure that they trust you and you trust them. Finally, if you are a host family watching this video and you're looking to host an au pair, my best piece of advice is to always make sure that your au pair feels comfortable and that you are respectful towards them. They are literally uprooting their lives in their home country to come live with you in your home. Making sure that they always feel welcome is key. Au pairs are not just employees. They are young people leaving their home countries for a great experience abroad. If you want to host somebody in your house, and that should be your main motivation to share your culture with them and to get some of theirs back because this is a cultural exchange and you never know how much you can learn about another person, another person's culture. So this is a very awesome experience that can benefit both parties if both parties are open. I love that I was able to spend quality time with my host family. I hung out with them on Friday nights and on weekends. I always felt that I had a safe space there and I think that's really important. I'm so grateful for them and the fact that we still have such a great connection. It's raining now. But I'm so grateful that we still have a great connection. I talk to the kids literally every single day <laughs> and it's been a year since I left and we still talk every single day. So this can be a lifelong bond that you have with somebody and I know that I'll always have my second family for me in Paris. And now also the girl that I was an au pair for wants to be an au pair herself after she graduates the university. So the cycle continues. My host family also got, gave me this necklace on my last day because, and it's a bee, and I always taught the kids to save the bees. So I literally always wear this and it reminds me of them. I definitely talk to a few families, get a good feel for who might be the best fit for you. Personally, I only talked to one family, it worked out. But you do wanna make sure that you're getting everything that you want out of this experience. I say that you can definitely be picky. You can afford to be picky. Make your list of everything that you want out of a family and go for it because you deserve to have the best experience possible and the experience that you want out of this. So be picky, talk to multiple host families, get your vacation days and make sure that this host family is ready to accept you into their lives, truly. And with that being said, I'll end the video here. If you need any more advice on being an au pair, make sure to leave me a comment. I'll make sure to reply or make another video. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. I will link a playlist full of the rest of my au pair advice videos down below so you guys can get your fix. And I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye.